In this video we do the electrical inspection or test for a single phase motor. Now as we can see there, this motor is identifiable through its nameplate and the design is pretty much the same as a three phase uh, motor. It's got everything that the three phase motor has shaft, there's bearings, front end plates, base. In size it can be the same, cooling fins, back cover, fan, except for the connection box where things change a bit. You can see this one is slightly bigger, there's more studs, it's got your earth stud also there. There's place for two capacitors even though there's only one. There's your fan, and so all around it looks very similar except for that connection box. Sometimes the capacitors is mounted on the outside as well. So here we go with the first test. I've got a multimeter and I need to identify my components before I can do any of the other tests. I've got about seven, six, seven, eight studs or connection points. I can see my capacitor is physically connected to the bottom two, there's a value on there as well. How will we find this value? Let's see what the testing does. And so it's about the only thing that we can confirm, you know, with the eye. But let's see what the multimeter says. And I would have to choose a particular range to start off with. And I will look for my ohm scale and I would put it on the 200 ohm scale, most multimeters have 200 ohms and in this case I have 600 so I will write uh, if I have to write down I used it on the 600 ohm scale again most multimeters would have 200 and you use 200 so firstly I have put a little crocodile clip on my black lead and I will hook that onto the pin Remember when you test, you don't want your skin touching. This is not a mega, but also you don't want any other interference. So I will test stud to stud to see where is my windings, my centrifugal switch and my capacitor. So we're going to have to remember where we have readings. Ah, there we go. 15.8. 15.8 is probably a winding which winding we don't know yet because one winding is higher than the other again we go to the next stud and we do not test the same two okay we have a reading and that's not ohms i press the hold the button so release hold button and then we would test the other two studs and they would find you need to get a grip and get a nice contact 9.9 .9, and if you hold it uh, jumped over to 10.5 so i would write there either 9.9 .9 or 10.5 is fine and then we have the capacitor so that one was the start winding one was the run winding Again, uh, you need to know the theory around the values of the windings to be able to know which is which. I've put my multimeter on the scale for the capacitor and I can see the 14 microfarads. That's perfect because that's exactly what it says. The reason why I put another crocodile clip on is I want to see physically what it's going to do on ohms because you can get use two different readings either put it on the microfarads or you can put it on ohms and it should be a very high reading so uh, you saw there that the reading couldn't be obtained because the scale is too low next is the mega and just to, on the mega scale uh, the reading where the needle is now, it's infinity. So all my readings I'm going to do now, I would want it to stay there. 
So between those two points, 0 and 1 or 0.5 is bad and between 0.5 or higher to infinity is fairly okay. Infinity the best. That top scale there is the scale for my mega ohms. The lower one, green, would be for continuity only, but I want to do the red one. So, again, also be very careful when you test uh, the battery. On this tester, there's also a battery check where if you push the button, it will show you that the battery is okay. If you want to test to see if the leads are okay, do not use it. Uh, put it together while it's on the red scale. Rather do it while it's on the own scale because it's safer that way. You might just damage the mega uh, circuit, circuitry because of putting DC walls through the leads. So right now we want to do the test. I will put a crocodile clip again and it makes it easier for me because I can then use my hands better. In this case I want to show you what's happening on the screen of the scale on the mega and I want to use uh, free up the, the other hand to actually do my testing. So I've got my studs. I remember where I found my components. I will do firstly my earth to components with my insulation resistance tester. And you can see there, uh, that is the name of the test. Insulation resistance between earth and components. So I stuck my black probe onto the earth and now I can see there that needle doesn't move and that is good. And that's all good readings because I have tested earth to my start winding, earth to my run winding, earth to my switch, earth to cap plate A and earth to cap plate B. Why does the capacitor have two parts to it? Because it's got two plates inside and they should be far apart. So that's why we test both ends of the capacitor, all right? So this makes it a little bit more intricate. And next we would have insulation resistance test between earth and components with a digital mega. Again, one representing infinity. And I'm doing the exact same test, but with a digital mega. So one is a good reading. My next test, insulation resistance between components. Now I want to test and see, does my, uh, let's say, start winding make contact with the switch or with the run winding or with the capacitors two plates? And so the most important test here is probably my two windings with each other. And if I look, the very first one on top and the furthest one on the right on top was my windings because I found uh, ohms readings there. 15 was the one, 15 point something and 10 point something was my two. And so that is the first one you want to document. It's the most important one. So that is my switch, that is my winding. Remember, there was a switch between those, and there was a winding. And so again, the needle does not move. That is now cap plate A, cap plate B. And it doesn't really matter where you put A or B, it's all the same. You are just doing the test. Now I want to test my other winding to my switch because I did not do that yet. I test, tested those two windings to each other. So again, that winding to the switch, that winding to cap plate A and plate B. Then I want to test my centrifugal switch to my capacitor as well. 
and that is a good reading. Using the digital tester, we should also um, just get a reading of one, one representing infinity. Let's see what happens when we test where we put our leads. So there's my digital mega, there's my light. I put it on, it's on ohms, I test my leads. Again, be very careful not to have it on the red selection. Now I put it on 500 or 1000. Uh, in this case, 500, double the operating voltage, which is 230, which will take us to 500 volts. And we want to test start winding to centrifugal switch, to run winding, to cap plate A, to the capacitor plate B. And that is a good reading. We put to the run winding. And we're testing the centrifugal switch to run. We're testing the cap plate A to run, cap plate B to run winding. Then the centrifugal switch we test to the capacitor plate A, capacitor plate B, and that should take care of those. Finally, we have the documentation, or let's say the reporting or documenting or recording of the test results. So you can see I've drawn out about eight studs there. Uh, for my own purposes, I want to just um, identify where it was. And if I remember correctly, those were the points. I had a capacitor between those two. And I want to put down my values that I found and put some information on the sheet. Uh, Again, most, most um, assessments would have a different layout. Maybe this is probably very little information that I'm putting here because we need to look at a specific country's um, standards uh, to, in, in order to do a correct uh, assumption or let's say prognosis of if a motor can be used or not. So I want to just point out that I, want, I found windings and components between these points and this is what I'm currently doing. I found the 15.8 ohms then I found by that the centrifugal switch and I draw a little symbol for a switch I wrote there uh, 0 ohms because it was closed there I had a winding 10.5 or 10 point, yes, 10.5 ohms. And I had the, the capacitor, we tested there and it was visually there as well. And we found it to be 14 microfarad. Now if it was 13 point something or 14 point something, we know that even there is a tolerance, but it was good enough. So I would write by the run winding 10.5, start winding 15.8, my centrifugal switch. Uh, I can write the, I know that the run winding must be low resistance, start winding must be higher. That is actually the regulation as well. Capacitor was 14 microfarads and because of it giving the exact reading there was no leakage. So the next test is the insulation resistance between earth and components. Remember we did this test with both um, analog and digital mega and we found all these readings to be uh, infinity. Um, and again, the, I want to just document it. And this gives me an idea of uh, uh, what this motor is about. Uh, if I want to put this motor into, into use. I'm just putting some more information on my drawing, probably the earth, which is not there. And I put in plate A and plate B for you to understand what it is and where it is I'm testing. So the, the earth test was from the earth stud to all these points, which is probably the simplest test after the component test. It's logical to do it this way. 
then a little bit of a more difficult part of this process would be testing between components and it's easy to get confused there is a little bit more information here a little bit more involved where you have to test between certain points let me just point out that finding the reading between start and a run winding is the most important always do this first by this next test and so again the test name would be insulation resistance between components simply because uh, I can't call it windings because we've got different components here so they were all infinity and that was all good this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching